Heat flow is a constant in the universe. It's always happening. Warmth is going from things that are hot into things that are cold. It's happening around us, it's happening within our homes. In order to understand how to make the heat and keep it there, you need to understand a little bit more about the metrics. And so we use something like this. You can buy a thermometer hygrometer, or if you just go to the store and ask for something that tells you what the temperature and relative humidity is in a space, they're very available for like 20 bucks. This one is a professional model and it's called a data logger. What this enables someone like me to do is to set this up and get trackable minute to minute or even by the second measurements of temperature and relative humidity and a third measurement, which is dew point. Dew point's important to understand because the main difference between indoor spaces and outdoor spaces is the huge amount of surface area inside. And dew point is all about the interaction of the air's temperature and humidity with surfaces. So if I wanna be able to predict and prevent surfaces becoming wet, because that's my nightmare, then what I would do is understand more about the metrics, which is of course what we're doing on this show. And so we used this to set up in this workshop to start with, because this workshop is the closest thing to an outdoor space that you're gonna get. It's not conditioned. In fact, birds can fly in and out of here and they do all the time. I don't have screens up. It's not insulated, it's not air sealed, and there's no equipment heating or cooling it or drying it. It's shaded, which is nice, and that's something that is not gonna account into a graph of the weather that looks like this. So you can see that the temperature goes up in the daytime when the sun comes out, and it goes down again at night. Meanwhile, the relative humidity goes down in the daytime and goes up again at night. It tends to be a pretty consistent level of moisture in the air, and so when the temperature goes up, relative humidity goes down. But there's a third measurement in this graph, and that is dew point. The dew point you can see is tracking a little bit with both because it's about the relationship of those two things with the surface. So in this space, the graph looks almost identical to the weather graph that we see. My graph is a little bit more detailed because my equipment is a little bit better. I'm able to get minute to minute readings instead of just hourly. So this space is a good way to understand the most minimal utilitarian shelter we could have where we're just trying to keep the rain out, we're trying to keep big animals out of here and people, and we're trying to make sure that wind doesn't blow things around in here. Not very sophisticated. Let's look at a couple other spaces where we're trying to use some of the techniques that we show in home diagnosis to try and harness the power of heat flow. Now this is the first step towards making a space that's a little easier to condition. So this is actually one of the original structures on our property. It's the old spring house. And I mean, you couldn't even see it when we got here. It was so overgrown, there was a tree growing out on top of it. So we call it troll house. This troll house has something that the workshop did not. It's called thermal mass. It means it's made out of heavy stuff. That makes it harder to heat up in the morning and it retains its heat at the end of the day when the sun goes down. If your house is made out of something like solid brick or concrete or stone, then it would have thermal mass, which is a nice thing, but you can see that it's not insulated or air sealed, so it's not really like a house. But it is considerably more controlled than the workshop was, where the workshop can change temperature on a dime and the graph looks very ragged. This space looks a lot more smooth. And you can see even that when the sun comes up in the morning, starts warming it up, but then it moves into shade and it dips right back down, which is something that you would not have seen with the workshop. So thermal mass is a first step towards controlling your heating and cooling. Now we're getting closer to a place where you could actually think about living. Welcome to our build. Now, if you look at the graph for the build, you will see the benefits of air sealing and insulation. And that's it. Since it's under construction, there's no heating and cooling equipment at work in here. And all you're seeing is the little bit of insulation that's outside the walls. There's not even any in the roof yet. This is how you start to really tamp down on the way that the weather tries to yank your living space around. But this really isn't real life. So let's go see what real life looks like. This is the space where we keep our testing equipment and some of our belongings that didn't fit into the tiny lab. Now this space also has thermal mass. The thermal mass is an eight inch 
concrete slab that's in contact with the ground. It also, obviously, since you know us, is airtight and insulated, but it has a piece of equipment at work in here. Mm -hmm, the magic dehumidifier, which we're gonna get into moisture more in the next episode. But, but for right now, you can see this one piece of equipment at work in the graph very clearly. I can use this information to find out if it's doing what it's supposed to be doing, how hard it's working, but we're still not really in real life because you are never gonna have just one piece of equipment at work in your house at any one time. Now we come to the temperature behavior of a real life lived in house. Where we have not just one, but two pieces of equipment that are hopefully working in tandem to tune the space. We have the HVAC system and a dehumidifier. And these two things are necessary together because when we were first on tour in this house, we actually refused to park it in the shade because if the HVAC system wasn't calling for cooling, then it wouldn't also dry the space. So we need to have both of these working together so that we can then park the house in the shade where it's gonna be more comfortable. And if you look at the graph of this house, it's much smoother, right? Except for you got real life. <laughs> like for example, the big jump where my daughter left the door open. Or you forgot to set the dehumidifier back to the level that the baby changed it from the other day, or somebody leaves a window open, somebody leaves a fan on. These things happen, it's okay. But we hope to, in the final episode of this season, show you what looks like almost a perfectly flat line in our big house that we're building. Using a systems approach is how you can control your own home's temperature behavior.